was this one, Kimiko. The juice in this one is just right. It feels fab to hike this hefty cube at zombie enemies. And the game has a nice ebb and flow. You've got plenty of power when you're chucking the die, but then you're completely powerless as you dodge and weave through baddies in order to pick the die back up again. Of course, there's more to it than that. In between rounds, you spend your cash in a shop to add special powers to your die. Now, every time you throw it, it lands on a random number and plays the corresponding power. Maybe shooting out bullets, or launching missiles, or spawning mines, or dropping out bees. You can also buy more dice and fill them with powers to create an arsenal of magic blocks. I'm not sure there's too much strategy involved. I found myself just throwing dice as often as possible and hoping for good effects. But I still had a blast with a game that is manic, silly, and a lot of fun. Randomancer is a highly polished tower defense game where your fortifications are provided at the roll of a dice. Like Plants vs Zombies, you need to plop down towers to fend off enemies who march along lanes. But instead of choosing them from a list, you must roll a handful of dice. So whether you get a powerful cannon, a handy shield, or a bomb is down to chance. After each wave, you get to add another die to your collection. That alone would make for a fun game, but Randomancer has a spicy little twist that adds a lot of fun and charm. You see, when you lob these dice into the arena, they are big, heavy, physical objects, which means you can lob them at enemies to do damage. This adds an extra layer of strategy. You don't want to throw all of your dice immediately, after all. And a layer of knockabout physics fun. I'm just left wondering. Instead of rolling the dice and then manually positioning the tower that appears, would the game be more fun if the towers just popped up wherever the dice land? It would be slightly less tactical, but when you're playing with randomness, it's often fun to just lean hard into the chaos. Another common theme in the jam was twin stick shooters where you physically throw a big old die at your enemies. A favorite of the bunch was roll of the dice. In this elegant, isometric game, your die acts like a stamp, leaving an imprint of its bottom-most face whenever you roll on these white paper tiles. To finish the level, you must shift and shimmy around so you can paint the tiles to match this map in the bottom left corner. The puzzles are well made, often just teeny tiny grids that are way harder than they initially seem. You'll have to think carefully about how to spin your die without spoiling the stamps you've already placed down. And the game has a simple solution to a problem faced by a lot of these games, which is you can't always see what's on the other side of the dice. Sure, opposite sides always add up to seven, but who wants to figure that out? So Roll of the Dice uses its camera to always show you three sides, and then with a press of the button, you can see icons for the other three. The game's pretty simple, but I think this would be a great base to construct an enjoyable puzzle gem. This year, the best one was Die Pound. You play as a die and can click the mouse to ground pound nearby enemies. The dicey twist is that when you land, you get a new number, which dictates how far away you'll land when you do the next jump. So you could be left with a tiny one pip hop or a massive six pip leap that sends you over to the other side of the screen. I think it might be fun to have a combo system that only ticks up if you kill an enemy with your leap. That way you can't just get rid of your rubbish one pip jumps in favour of something better, but are forced to get up close and personal with baddies. But that's just me backseat designing. What's here is fast, fun, and addictive. Give it a shot. Perhaps the most common theme in the jam was puzzle games where you roll a dice on a grid. Whether that's to spell letters, climb structures, or play rock, paper, scissors. There are some really clever ones that had me thinking, but my- Rolling for Royalty. The game is a series of simple turn-based battles, fought with dice rolls. And in between each bout, your dice are unfolded, and you can swap out the faces. Do you want lots of attacks? More shields? Perhaps a spell? a modifier, or money that can be spent on even more faces. Then the game adds a further tactical layer. After each roll, you can choose to re-roll some of your dice. Now we're adding a sense of risk and reward. Is it better to just keep that weak attack, or will you risk rolling it again for something better? I had a good time with this game and enjoyed the charming, untextured 3D art. 
I could definitely see the idea expanded further into a full role-playing game. There's always some good, neon-lit, high-tempo, score-chasing arcade thrills in the GMTK Game Jam. So that's my top 20, but as always, some honourable mentions. Roll to Hit On is an RPG where you flirt with your teammates, leading to different buffs and nerfs. Diced Coffee is a manic plate-spinning shop simulator about making coffee from dice. And Design by Committee is a game where pesky producers keep changing the game's design while you're playing it. There's loads, loads more. You can play all 6,000 games over on itch.io. And you can also see the public's rankings for all of the games. Have a play through the top 100 and see if you agree or disagree with my picks. Thank you so much to everyone who took part in the jam, or just rated some games, or chatted with us on Discord, or watched my streams. Thanks to my mods on Discord and YouTube, and to everyone who made our awesome TeamFinder app. An extra huge thank you to my patrons. Remember that GMTK Game Jam has no corporate sponsors. It's all funded by viewers like you. The Jam will be back in 2023, so subscribe to the channel to receive the date announcement sometime next year. Thanks. Bye.